Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'm feeling quite rusty as I prepare for my upcoming craft show. On Skillshare, I found this class by Stina Veeman on top tips for selling at art and craft shows. It's so nice that she packaged all the things to consider before, during, and after a show. The most valuable thing I learned were the soft skills that are important for a successful market. It helped reduce my anxiety about talking to customers. You may already know that Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. The classes are high quality and I think it's such a rich place to advance your skills as a creative. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare.
Are you ready for some real behind the scenes content? So this place is getting pretty overwhelming. I found this um, painted sign from my parents' basement. Um, I used to use it for markets, so I might pull it out for this upcoming market. Um, it's just a lot in here. There's like barely any space to walk around. Um, there are two tripods set up right now. This shelf is not very efficient in terms of how I'm using the space. When I first got back, I was uh, determined to get organized and all I really did was um, reorganize these drawers and a little bit of the cabinet, but that's kind of it. Um, under my desk I have, let me focus here, this camera is really heavy. Yeah, I have shipping supplies and random stuff under the desk. And then I also have this corner. Oh my god. Let me turn on the light with my elbow. Yeah, so just stuff that used to be up on the wall is now here. Um, lots of paper and packaging materials and stuff. Yeah, it's just a lot. So this is going to be a problem for future Chanel to deal with because I just don't have time to do anything until after September ends. Here's where I'm at with market prep. All of these books are pretty much finished and then I have these books to put covers on. Um, I am preparing the covers right now. This actually took all afternoon. Um, so it always takes longer than I think. I asked on my Instagram stories um, what people want to see at the market. I don't know how many people in Vancouver follow me and will look at my story. So um, if you're watching this and you're in Vancouver and you want to come buy books in person, let me know what you want to see. You There will definitely be soft cover journals and I'm going to make little, um, little thin sketchbooks as well. I've already, I've already got a request for Instax albums and we'll see where I get with the watercolor sketchbooks. I will definitely have, um, I'll definitely restock my online shop with watercolor sketchbooks as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, if, if I have leftovers, I'll bring them to the market with me.
My chipboard finally arrived, so I'm going to start on the watercolor sketchbooks today. If it turns out to be decent, I'm definitely going to share the source because it was really hard to find um, a chipboard source in Canada. I made orders with two shops before I found this one and both shops um, told me that they didn't have it in stock or it was really delayed. And I don't know why they don't tell me that at the time of purchase, so it just um, made it, things just took longer. Before I get to bookbinding, I wanted to share this book I just read. I picked this up after it was recommended by Janani at The Story Ain't Over, and it was so good. I read it in two days. Um, it's about a gamer girl who is also a hacker who lives in a world where millions of people around the world play a game called Warcross and this is like uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. It's so integrated in people's lives that the currency you make in the game can be translated to real life money. Um, so it's super high stakes. So the whole world can kind of tune in as if it were the Olympics. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of really well-written action scenes and um, there's some romance in it and lots of twists and turns and my uh, little gamer heart is just really happy. I'm glad I learned about this through Janani because otherwise I wouldn't have gravitated towards this with this cover art. It's just not that great in my opinion. Um, yeah. I've been on a sci-fi kick lately. I've been watching sci-fi. Um, reading and playing games as well. So let me know if you have any sci-fi movies or shows or books that you love. This stuff is dense. It's a good thing, but it's gonna take me a little longer to make the cuts. So I'll just be here cutting chipboard.
I've heard so much about Keith Smith and I finally um, went out to look for his books and um, the Vancouver Library has a bunch of them so I'm excited to get into these. And then these books are um, ones that I've heard a lot about and have been wanting to read. This is a sequel to a book that I read last year. If you like to play music in your rooms, don't play it too loud because the noise pollution is really compromised not only in your home but the ones of your neighbors as well. Busy shows are kind of loud with other people talking over the show. Your neighbor might have. Hello, hello. This is Chanel speaking. I haven't been able to vlog much because of the heat and 
I'm a bit overwhelmed with all the bookbinding I have to do for my shop update and the upcoming show. So I hope you're enjoying this style of um, a silent studio vlog. I quite like doing them because I can express myself a little differently with the captions. As you can see, I have a lot of chiogami paper that is too small for book covers. So I'm cutting them up and using them for the little notebooks I'll be selling at the market. Ben Q, the company who sent me this lamp, wanted me to do an honest review of the lamp. They wanted to know if it would operate as a good crafting lamp. And my needs are really simple. I just need something that will offer good thorough soft light um, so that there aren't too many shadows casting and I can see my work and it does just that. You can see that the light floods my desk pretty well and I can see everything I'm doing and, and I like that I can control the temperature and the intensity pretty easily. This is definitely the fanciest lamp I own. It's not quite my style, but it's beautiful nonetheless. I think it's going to be useful when the days grow shorter and I want to work into the evenings. Some of you might remember that I use a little paper lamp um, when it gets dark and it just doesn't really suffice because the light is low and it can be distracting to my eyes. So I like that this is a taller lamp and the light can come from overhead. It turned out to be bigger than I expected, so I don't think I can bring it to LA with me. Um, but my mom loves to sew and I think it'll be perfect for her sewing room. Those are all my thoughts for now. I really appreciate you being here. Over the last few months, I've been reading a lot of comments and messages about how my content has helped you make your first book and learn about bookbinding and that's really touching. It's really heartwarming. I'm so glad that I can be of help and I hope you have a good rest of your week and I'll talk to you next time.